Good morning. At the outset, I am extremely humbled that management of Eras Medical College Lucknow has asked me to address the new PG students in Era Medical College. Before I say anything, let me introduce myself. I am a Professor Rajin Prasad, Director of Medical Education in this medical college and Head of Pulmonary Medicine. I have been former Director, Vallabhai Patel Chest Institute, Delhi. I have been also former Director, Institute of Medical Sciences, SAFA. Now it is Medical University. And I have worked for more than four decades in King George's Medical University, Lucknow. At the very outset, I welcome all the postgraduate student who has joined this medical college. Exactly, if I tell you, about 45 years back, I was sitting like you for my post-graduation in KG Medical College, Lucknow, way back in 1976. I am going to share you some of the thoughts which you'll, I hope you will practice in your life that may be useful in your future career. You know, these three years of post-graduation, I must say, is very important years of your life. What you learn here, what you do here, what habits will inculcate here, although you have inculcated some habits here or undergraduate days, but whatever you do here, this will be a real meaning for you. You know, I always say that there is no substitute for the hard work. Actually, what I have learned in the medical science, you should be diligent. Rather, I say that probably in this science, diligence is more required than intelligence. I know that, that much of intelligence all of you have when you have come to this stage. Many of you will confront with the patient in OPD as well as in indoor. What I will suggest you, treat every patient as a most important person, what you call it VIP. Whether he is a poor, whether he is a rich, whether he is a VIP, but at least treat every patient as a most VIP. Why? Because every patient, what I have understood in last 45 years, is a, like a different book. If you talk as many number of patients, you will become experienced. So please don't ignore any patient which comes across to you. I must say every patient may not give you money, but every patient will give you experience which you might read in many, which might get that experience maybe after reading many books, even after reading many books, you may not get that. You know, today, biggest complaints of patient is that, Dr. Sahib ne to baat hi nahi kiya. Means what? You have not talked properly to the patient. So learn how to talk to the patient. Learn how to behave with the patient. When I say that how to talk to the patient, it means you have to take history. History is very important. I always of this opinion, not me, but whole literature of this opinion, 
that history is very important. If you are a good in history taking, you can convince your patient. You can very effectively diagnose your patient. 85% of these things comes from good history. So you have to learn how to take good history from every patient. And that you know, I always say history taking is an art. And what is art, it requires practice. So not that in one patient, two patient, ten patient, hundred patient you will learn. When you will see as number as possible patients, then you will learn. I am still, at this age, I am still learning. Sometimes I learn from the patient how to take history. Because as I said, every patient is a different patient. For this I may inform you, I have a one YouTube lecture with my name. How to take history? When I posted this YouTube, I never knew that so many people will watch this because this is a very simple lecture. But I think uh, by now more than 30,000 people might have watched this lecture. So you can, if in spare time, you can also watch this. What I have seen today, youngster, they jump on to the diagnosis, they jump on to the investigation. If somebody has CT scan, I'm a, I'm a chest physician, so many people they go to see for CT. I say never. That will not give you the experience. Take first history, think of differential diagnosis, then do examination, then think of a, some diagnosis. According to diagnosis, investigate the patient and see those investigation in a graded manner. Suppose patient has x-ray, see it first. What you see in the x-ray? Suppose subsequently patient has a CT, see it. You will be become a very experienced clinician. Treatment changes very frequently. What I have been taught in 70s and 80s, they have all changed. What remains constant is the how to diagnose. Except whatever I have learned my, in my undergraduate days, in my postgraduate days, the basics remain the same. Yes, there are certain new investigation which has come up. I have to be cope with that. Otherwise, diagnosis is a constant. So what you have to learn in these th three years, how to diagnose, not how to treat. Treatment because whatever you learn today, maybe in the next five years, it might change. So that you have to read it again. So learn how to take proper history, learn how to think about diagnosis, learn how to investigate patient and learn how to react to those investigations. And I say, when I talk about investigation, I say one line I would like to repeat here in front of you, that don't be dictated by any investigation. Take them as your friend, as your advisor. So, all, so whatever investigation reports are in front of you, combined with the all available thing of that particular patient. Suppose he has got history, he has got some finding, he has got other investigation and combine together, then take. So that's why I said, never be dictated by any investigation. Take them as your advisor. And uh, what I am, uh, uh, you have to learn every aspect of it. You know there are MCI attributes for PG student. You have to learn every attributes. Apart from also, you have to learn how to behave. Behavior is a very important issue. How you talk to your patient, how you behave with your patient, that your, your reputation, your type of a doctor, what you are, what patient will perceive, what society will perceive, will also depend upon your knowledge, will also depend on behavior. So it's not only knowledge. Knowledge and its application and your behavior, everything is very important to make you a better doctor. In the end, I know that 
times to come you will be very busy don't waste time i always say but i will suggest all of you please keep yourself healthy and to keep yourself healthy that is very important and unless you are healthy you cannot become a good a doctor you are you cannot be useful for society so your health is also should be your priority and for this i will suggest rather what i practice because whatever i told you i usually do practice i have done this in last more than 4 decades you spend some time on yourself do some exercise do some meditation if you do you are if you are doing yoga whatever interest is there is spend at least half an hour to 1 hour daily food is also very important what i when 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 i was pg there was no time to eat but then god has given me lesson no 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 this is not a good thing so you have to how you may be very busy but try to inculcate a habit so in medical what i say if i am talking online about moral and ethics moral and ethics now you are taught there are classes because it is one of the attributes of the mci so the teacher you have to learn you have to behave with all moral and ethical standards i will end my address by saying you best of luck for your future endeavors and in the end i always say if you believe i can and then i will definitely do it i am thankful to the management of era for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts to our postgraduate students who have joined for the first time thank you very much